What is going on YouTube? This is Hey It's Lou from xdadevelopers.com and today I am bringing you a video tutorial on the Linux kernel. Now most of you who follow me on Twitter or follow my work at XDA know that I prim primarily work with Android. However, I am a full-time Linux desktop user and do all of my Android work within a Linux environment. And so as an introduction to the whole kernel process, um, I thought it would definitely be helpful to start off with learning how to work with the desktop Linux kernel. Uh, I did this for a few reasons. Um, first reason being is resources. If you were to go online and try to find guides or articles regarding the Android kernel, you're going to find some. However, if you were to try to find guides and tutorials and articles regarding the Linux desktop version, you're going to find a lot more. And many of the processes that you're going to use in Android are actually the same as uh, the desktop Linux kernel. Okay, so as far as the resources available to you, especially just starting out, uh, it's going to be very helpful to learn the, the desktop pro uh, Linux kernel process um, before Android. Okay, and the second being is most developers, Android developers, use Linux as their development environment. And so by being able to work with the desktop Linux kernel, you're going to get a better understanding about Linux itself. Um, Linux is an amazing operating system. Um, I was a Mac user previous to, to Linux, and I switched over actually after getting an Android phone. And you know, I haven't looked back. You you truly have so much freedom um, with the Linux desktop. Uh, if you're used to flashing ROMs with Android and being able to see all of the neat features and and everything with uh, ROMs, um, think of think of Linux for your computer as almost like a ROM. There's so many different distributions, so many features. Um, you literally can customize anything and everything about Linux. It's it's an open um, operating system, so you can change anything you want about it, and it's, it's truly amazing. And you can unlock the power of your hardware. Um, you've got all of that at your disposal. So um, what we're going to need first is we're going to need some tools. Now, I should actually, I should mention that the environment I'm working in here today is Linux Mint 10 Julia. It's the main edition. It's built off of Ubuntu 10.10. So if you're using Ubuntu or Linux Mint, the, the, the steps we're taking today are identical. Um, most of what we're going to be doing today can also be used in a Debian environment as well. So what we need to do is we need to collect some tools. Now, in the show notes, you're going to find that I placed all of these things that we're about to, to do in the show notes. So you can simply copy and paste. So what we're going to need here is a set of packages to be able to compile the kernel. Now, if you're using Ubuntu 10.10, I believe that 64-bit uh, edition, I believe that the 32-bit libraries are included out of the box. However, if you're using a 64-bit edition of Linux Mint, the 32-bit libraries are not included. So you're going to want to get those. You're, you're going to also see here that I've included a PPA. Um, the reason being is this specific package, kernel package, the one that's in the Ubuntu repositories right now, actually has a bug in it. And that bug comes into play when you want to append a specific version or a custom name for your kernel. Now, I do kernel work quite a bit, especially with the desktop. And, you know, I use, I use uh, my own custom kernels. I actually put some performance kernels together based on the, the Zen project or the Lecorex project. And so because I'm switching all the time, it helps by adding specific names to these kernels. Okay, so I know um, which kernel I'm working with, and it's easier to keep track. Now, you're going to see that the current kernel I'm using is 2.6.37, which is the latest stable build. Um, I've got my custom name here, Hey, It's Lou. I've, I've got the BFS and the BFQ patches on this kernel, and I put it together on February 5th. So this is my way on how to kind of keep track. So... Uh, what we want to do is get the most up-to-date version of this package and the way we're going to do that is by adding this PPA. So what you can do is you can copy this right out of the notes and what you're going to want to do now is go and open up Synaptic Package Manager you're going to want to go over here to settings repositories go to other software hit add 
paste in your PPA, then hit add source. Now, mine's already in there, so I'm not going to do that. But once you hit add source, if you're in Ubuntu 10.10, it's going to tell you to come back out and select reload. Now it's going to check the repositories uh, for any any new software. It's going to add anything you've you've um, put into your source list, and it's going to tell you if any, there's any upgrades available, so on and so forth. If you're in Linux Mint, after you added that PPA and hit close, it's actually going to do that reload for you automatically. So now that that's in there, what we can do is we can come up here, we're going to copy, we're going to paste uh, all of the packages that we're going to need. You're going to hit enter supply your password now I already have all these installed so it's telling me that all of these packages are already at their newest version nothing needs to be upgraded no new packages need to be installed doesn't need to remove anything so you know that's all set but for you it's gonna tell you that it's gonna show you a, a whole list of packages their dependencies and you're gonna have a yes or no option do you want to install these just hit Y enter and it's gonna then download all the packages and install them for you no problem Again, same process for the 32-bit libraries. Just copy and paste those in, hit enter. I've got them installed already, so I'm not going to have to do anything, but same exact thing for you. It's going to show you a list of packages, their dependencies, and a yes or no option if you want to install. Um, hit Y, enter, and it's going to be on its way. It's going to download all the packages and install them for you. So that's all of our tools. So what, next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get our kernel sources and we're going to also need to get the patches that we need. So to get our kernel sources, you're going to want to go to www.kernel.org. This is the Linux kernel archives. Everything having to do with the Linux kernel and all of its sources are going to be here, whether it be the full source or patches. You can view any of the patches. You can view any GitWeb uh, changes and view the change logs. Um, 2.6.37 is what we're going to be working with. It's the latest stable kernel. 2.6.38, however, is in release candidate. I'm very excited about this. There's a lot of big uh, changes coming in the .38 kernel and uh, a lot of great things. But for all intents and purposes today, we're going to be using 2.6.37. So just select the kernel, download it um, for the sake of saving time. I've already got that. So next what we need to do is, is we need to get our patches. So again, refer to the, the show notes for the, the um, links to all these patches. First being BFS. I'm not going to go into depth about what these patches are. BFS is an alternate um, ske uh, CPU scheduler patch. Um, there's a ton of documentation online about BFS. You're going to see a lot of the Android kernels also include BFS. Um, and it's even better on the desktop in my opinion so what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click on the link save link as it's gonna give you the name dot patch it's exactly what you want um, but I'm just gonna throw it on my desktop hit save okay so BFS that's it just one patch now we need BFQ now when getting patches it's important to know that patches are specifically made for certain kernel versions. So if you're working with a 2.6.37 kernel, you need a 2.6.37 patch. Now if you were to come over to the BFS patch, for instance, and open this up, you're going to see a brief description of what it is here at the top. Then right down here, where it says index, Linux 2.6.37. So that specifically tells you that it's for the 2.6.37 kernel. Okay, so B, uh, the BFQ patch, the next one that we want to get, actually is three separate patches. So what you're going to do is you're just going to, again, right-click on the link, save link as, it's going to give you a big long name, dot patch, that's fine, just hit save. Repeat the process for all three. Okay, there we go. So we've got our kernel sources, and we've got the patches that we need for the kernel. Next thing. What we need to do now is uh, unpack all of our kernel sources. Now, all of the guides that you're going to find online, they're going to tell you that you should be building out of your source directory, and theoretically, you really should. I'm building a kernel that can be relocated to another computer and another system, so um, that's where fake root kind of comes into play. And you know, for 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 what I'm doing, I can build on the desktop, and, and honestly, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So, uh, I just created a, a folder on the desktop. I called it kernel 
you can call it whatever you want doesn't really matter um, and I put all my patches and sources inside so what we want to do now is we want to unpack our source code for the kernel we're going to do that by CD seeding into uh, the folder we put on the desktop this puts us with inside that directory now we're going to unpack the sources by using the tar xvjf command I'm extremely lazy so I'm just going to copy and paste so I don't have to type that name out and hit enter so all of our kernel sources are being unpacked you're going to see a lot of .c files that lets you know you're dealing with source code this also tells you that these um, most of the Linux kernels primarily written in the C programming language so for those of you out there that know C um, you should feel right at home with the with the Linux kernel um, you're gonna see a lot of drivers most of what makes up the Linux kernel believe it or not is actually drivers and a lot of the patches that come out are are actually pa uh, driver patches um, so what we're gonna do when this is done unpacking is we're gonna symbolically link our unpacked sources to um, a directory we're going to create called Linux. Reason for this being when the compiling process begins and the kernel is building things like the video drivers and things of that nature and building certain modules, it's going to look for that Linux directory. Now, um, I've successfully put patches together before that, that uh, without having to symbolically link um, the source directory with the, the Linux directory however it's just best practice to do it so the way we're going to do that is by executing ln s space name of our unpacked sources directory which is Linux 2.6.37 space Linux hit enter and as you can see here it created that Linux directory that I talked about okay next thing we want to do is copy ourselves into the Linux directory CD Linux enter so now we're inside that Linux directory we're gonna go ahead now and apply th these patches that we uh, that we downloaded so I'm gonna drag those into 2.6.37 we're gonna patch by using the patch command which is patch dash p1 less than symbol paste the patch name hit enter you can see here that it went through and it told us what it patched now if your patch didn't apply successfully it's going to tell you something like hunk failed at line number it's going to give you a line number um, however it did not do that here so we know that that patch applied successfully so we're going to go to the second BFQ patch now again patch dash P1 okay second patch went through just fine and now we're on to the third patch third patch is good and last but not least the BFS patch very good so all of our patches have been applied successfully what we're going to do now is I'm actually going to end part one here. Part two is going to go into the configuration and the, comp the compiling process. Um, so the configuration part is where the fun really begins. That's going to allow you to tweak the Linux kernel specifically for your hardware. For instance, if you have an Intel processor, processor it's going to let you know it's going to enable you to tell the kernel that you're running an Intel processor. It's also going to enable you to remove things that you don't need because in theory a smaller kernel is a faster kernel. So stay tuned for part two for the configuration and the compiling process.